Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at another giant vehicle. This one is very impressive with its sheer destructive power, and it's called the Cerberus, which is this lovely thing over here. So this is a giant land vehicle that features a whopping 65 assault cannons, all featured within this little barrel right here, with a click of a button that'll fire all at the same time and delete anything you look at. On this side of this thing, we've got a couple of autocannon turrets for automated defense, and all the way around this thing, you probably notice we've got some fireworks launchers, which are more, well, to roleplay as a smoke launcher, so if you're in trouble with an enemy approaching you, you can fire them out in front of you while trying to plan your escape. Anyway, zooming away from this, this is what it looks like in its entirety. It's got a lot of stuff going on with this. A lot of functional blocks not really needed, but just purely there because they look great with how they've all been set up. So I'll press F10, find it in here, we'll have a look around the outside, drive around for a bit, then for the end, I place this down there at Space Pirate Headquarters, we will try deleting them, or at least disabling them, to test out the giant gun at the front. So this thing is 1761 large blocks, using one hell of a lot of the DLC packs. We've got a nice bit of information about on the Steam Workshop page itself, such as block, PCU limit, and then of course its armaments there is 65 assault cannons, then down to there is everything it has equipped on there. So we've got some cryopods, O2HU generators, gyroscopes, all detectors, remote controls, cameras, survival kit, nectar, custom weapon control of course with the giant gun on top, short wheel suspensions, space balls which are called Cosmospheres, which I think that's an actual better name for the space balls. Anyway, laser antenna, hydrogen tanks, reactors, containers, and the AI attack block, the parachute hatch, spawn lights, corner armory, fireworks launchers, and remote controls in case you need it. So we're going to give this a thumbs up, move around towards the very front, have a quick look around the outside, like I said. Let's go and tag the space pirates, which is sitting somewhere in the distance, right over there. So, hiding all of that, my character can just stay on there for the moment. And this is what we get for the very front of the Cerberus. So, right down here, we've got two spotlights to light up the darkness, put a gyroscope right in the middle to help control this thing when you go over the cliff. On the very left and right hand side, on our lovely creamy steel blocks, we've got some neon tubes adding as our front lights. Up to here for our gun, there's our 65 assault cannon turrets. With our LCD screen right above there, where right behind it is going to be our camera to actually precisely aim this thing when it comes to shooting is. Pull away from here, looking down onto the side, we've got some warning labels where it says no atmosphere beyond this point and it points towards all the guns, which I suppose is sort of correct. If you turned into red mist, there's not going to be any atmosphere for you to breathe, because you'll be dead. Anyway, coming all the way down, looking at the base body first of all, come up to the turret at the very ends. So around here, here's our wheels, we've got four on both sides. Once again, our neon tubes adding some more decoration. There's some nice use of our leather blocks with an arrow pointing towards the front. Make sure you know exactly where the front of the vehicle is. Then right in the very middle here, we've got two columns with some piss and heads from decoration. We're right in the middle, we then got another warning sign, which says hazard environment right down here, which is because it's going to be standing in between both your wheels. Pull away from this around towards the back. Here we go, some more neon tubes, more warning signs. Then at the very back of this thing, we then got our neon tubes in a red colouring, where like the very front, instead of having our spawn lights, we've then got some thrusters to help move you around when going uphill, a connector in the middle, a camera on the remote control block to help reverse this thing up. Up to there, we can see a shell block, we then see our corner armory moving up slightly. There's our survival kit, there's our cockpit, and that looks like a small battery with a bit of power. I might be mistaken with that, but I'll take a look at that when I go around on foot. For the back of the turret, we've then got two ore detectors, so we can go out on a balance scout for ore patches if you really want to use this vehicle for that. But no, it is purely there for decoration. As you see, we've got some big blocks just covering up all the internals. Moving up to there, there's another remote control block. Looking all the way down, there's some auction farms on the left-hand side, column under a reactor, on the spore lights. Right in the very middle here, between all these blasted edge blocks, a laser antenna. Then down to there, there's your gyroscopes, there's your hinge lifter up and down. And there's the very top of our turret, with a bunch of armor panels, steel blocks, and beam blocks. Dropping the camera all the way down and into the turret, we can see some warhead batteries on the side. Pass into this section, there's our conveyor that comes all the way down onto our rotor, so we can spin this full 360 if we wanted to. Here's all of our car containers to store all the ammunition inside, which is very much needed to actually let this thing fire continuously. Looking up to there, there's our space ball, or the Cosmo ball, I think that's what it's called on the workshop page. Anyway, down to there, there's our custom weapon controller, and more car containers lining the room. Anyway, yes, coming onto this side, it's going to be basically the same as what we just saw with our arrows, warning signs, and all of that. So over to the turret on the side, here's one of two auto cannon turrets to blast your enemies with if you say can't aim quickly enough with the main cannon. Here with the composite, we can see it's attached onto a hinge, and then that's being attached onto one of our cargo containers, which we can clearly see right here. 
Zooming away from this, coming around towards the very front of this thing, zooming all the way through, because some fantastic use of our light panels, just making a very red ominous glow. Then over to here, right below this assault cannon, we then got a top mounted camera, so we can precisely, precisely aim this gun. It's just turning around like so, that's what it looks like. Reversing up, all of these guns. There we are. Now we can move all the way up and look down this thing. That's maybe what it looks like. Fantastic use of the auction farm, and all that to give it that overall great look. Then dropping down and coming underneath it, here we go, mining all the grass, we then see our O2H2 generators, our hydrogen tanks, to make sure our thrusters can be used for a nice long time. Into the middle there, there's our reactor with two more gyroscopes, we then see the bottom of some batteries, and towards the front there, there's another space ball, another gyroscope, our spotlights we saw at the very front. And there we go, that's a brief look around the outside, that's bloody fantastic how it's all been sub. Some very unique use of all the different blocks that don't really need to be on this vehicle, but still it works very well for the overall design. So grabbing hold of my character, what we're going to do is now come around towards the very back of this thing, grabbing hold of a welder so we can actually check that thing on the saw at the very back, to come all the way around. That was a parachute hatch, so yes it wasn't a battery, it was a parachute hatch, that was my mistake. But anyway, going into this, this is our main cockpit, if I can actually get it to highlight, there we are. This is what it looks like from a first person view, so it's surrounded by car containers, that's our custom weapon controller in the middle. Into third person view, this is simply what it looks like, so we're going to lose quite a lot of vision at the front of the vehicle. See, so we're travelling around at high speeds, it might be very easy to bump into a little rock. As for the controls itself, number one's going to be to take over the gun, with the free camera away from this, naming it like so, mouse clicking. There we go, that's a very deep chunky sound, as it fires all 65 assault cannons. Firing it one more time, there we go, we we'll turn around and look at it like so, let the smoke clear, firing it once more, and there we go, that's a lot of damage in a short amount of time. Anyway, number two, that's going to be your camera right above your gun so we can precisely aim this thing, zoom ahead of us, see exactly what's going on. Remember that, I'm pressing number three, that's for your camera on the very tip top of the gun, so now we can see exactly where we're going, we would need to say aim slightly higher than normal, but the other camera would help us. Coming out of that, press number 4, that's for your fireworks launches on the side, simple toggle on and off. So there we go, like I said, with a smoke launcher, that can now cover this area in a nice thick fog. Now we can just reverse up, and while we're trying to escape your enemies. But other than that, it'll make a very pretty view for your enemies, as you blast them with all your guns. Anyway, number 5 is for your remote control block, we've then got a camera, so we can now drive this thing around in reverse, coming out of both of them. Number 6, number 7 is for your wheels, but we don't need to touch any of that. Number 8 is then for your auto cannon turret and your weapon controller to turn them on and off just in case they do automatically fire by themselves. And then number 9 is for your thrusters and the back to turn them on and off just in case you need a little bit of assistance moving uphill. And there we go. So with that, we're now going to come out of that and actually start to drive this thing around to see how it handles. And as you expect from a tank like design, a very big tank like design, this thing is very slow, but once it gets going, it does seem to get a nice lot of speed. Slamming on the brakes, there's no risk of this thing. Flipping over whatsoever due to the sheer weight of it. Now doing a tight turn all the way around. There we go. We're not really going to be going anywhere too quickly, but it does seem to handle tight turns very well on a flat surface. How it handles it on a very wonky surface, do not know. Here we go, we're now going up to about 30 meters per second, and it seems very, very stable. But as for that, now what we're going to do is work our way over to the space pirates in the distance, and that does seem to be tipping over slightly, so we've got to try and reline this thing. So there we are, we are being a bit reckless, can tip over. It's very easy to spot and stop it in the nick of time. Anyway, up to here, putting on the brakes, coming into this, into the camera, here we go. And now I need to put number 8 turn on. There we go, and now it's automatically started to shoot into the enemies. But I don't even need to be in the camera, it's going to do it automatically. And look at the sheer damage it is doing. That's one hell of a lot of damage. In fact, bring the free camera all the way over, wherever the free camera has gone. There we go, we see the massive volley going all the way across, completely annihilating all the turrets all the way around this. Another shot should be coming over at any moment. There we go, but it didn't even render the shots. It just deleted the entire building. And this is doing one hell of a lot of destruction to this poor little base. Looks like they took a direct hit straight into the middle. There we go, that's one hell of a lot of blocks missing. It should do a follow-up volley. There we go. And that was absolutely, utterly annihilating this pirate headquarters. There we go, even more shots. In fact, we're going to turn that off in the moment to make sure it can catch up and display all the trails correctly. And look at that, that's just one hell of a lot of destruction on the inside, completely destroyed all these seal blocks for this interior part, and came out the opposite side, and even damaged the building behind it. Turning on once again, comes another volley, and there we go, all the way through, an absolute spectacular sight to see. 
Yes, it looks like this base is basically being almost completely destroyed other than that turret sitting on the side, which I can easily handle myself by manually aiming it. So what I'm going to do now is just grab hold of it and actually turn off the custom weapon controller. In fact, I don't even need to actually aim it properly. It looks like it has discovered the turret on the side. It's pinging all the way around to actually hit everything. And there we go, it's now going for the other turrets on the building. I'm just going to drive all the way up to this, risk damaging this thing, but it seems like it's not going to be too much of an issue at the end day, considering how powerful this thing actually is. And the fact that we've got all the cannon turrets on the side actually help protect us from any kind of stray shots or any kind of stray turrets that have not been destroyed yet. But look at the sheer destruction. There we go, there's the auto cannon turrets now engaging. And that's just one hell of a lot of damage coming out of that. I do like it when it staggers itself. In fact, even having the script on here that say staggers all the shot could be even more impressive. And that kind of defeats the point of having a gigantic cannon. There we go, now circling all their rounds. And it looks like nothing is firing back. That's now just deleting that poor building on the side. And it looks like we might have taken a little bit of damage here and there. But yeah, we've got some deformed blocks on the side of the turrets. But hopefully, hopefully it is going to actually disable them. It might not. This will be where I'd have to manually control it to actually destroy all the turrets because it seems to be quite fixated on destroying other stuff. Other stuff that does not need to be destroyed just yet. Yes, yeah, just circling around here. It's going to make very quick work of the Space Pirate District Headquarters. So as for that, that's pretty much it for this video and all this thing has to offer. It's just a fun thing to play around with. If you want to have something with a lot of guns on there, there's a very meaty, very satisfying fire against your enemies. So be linked to the description below, do share that out and play around with yourself. Highly recommend you do. I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.